Now, let me show you some stuff. This is this, this kind of stuff, and I, I got it. Man. This kind of stuff breaks my heart because I, I can see it coming. And you know, as you see it, it, it literally breaks your heart. You hate talking about it, but it's in the book. So I, I, I talk about everything that's in the book. Okay. I don't skip it. I don't, I don't apologize for God. He never asked me to do that. And I'm not going to do it. All right. So look at this concerning the coming of the Lord. Now, this is obviously as we get closer to the coming, the second coming, and I will gathering together to him, talking about the rapture. We ask you not to be shaken, folks. There's things that's going to be going on, but we are not to be troubled. Why not? Because we know it's coming. I'm telling you right now about it. You know it's coming. If you, again, if you think America, friend, just think about where we were in the 70s and in the 80s. The stuff that's happening now would have never happened. Even that short period of time ago. No way. Don't be troubled. Either by spirit, by word, or letter. People was going around claiming that Paul said something he didn't say. And they said God said something. So Paul was saying, nope, forget it, man. That's not me. All right. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, that day is the day of the Lord. Okay, this is a specific time period called the tribulation. But watch what he says. It's not going to come unless the falling away comes first. Now listen. The falling away is a specific event. It is not people not going to church. It is not. It has nothing to do with that. What is he talking about? He's talking about the second coming. The second coming isn't for the church. The second coming is for Israel. So who's falling away? Who's falling away? Israel and the false religion. Okay. The one world religion and the man of sin. So there you have it. Here is the woman being talked about in Revelation 17. This is the whore that rides who? The beast. So you have the false religion that falls away, that gathers everybody under the false prophet. Now you have the man of sin. So that's what he's talking about in the son of perdition and all this stuff. So that's going to be the beginnings of this falling away. That's why I'm talking about it. I'm not talking about the specific falling away. What am I talking about? The things that's going to lead to this falling away. Do you know that if the church was, was in the first century when the apostles that this wasn't be, this wouldn't be possible? Why not? Because they knew the word of God. The apostles knew it. Okay. And today it's hard for this to come completely together. When this happens, you know what happens? You have a one world religion. All the religions of the world, all these false religions, even false Christianity, going to come together. You see it today. You see so-called evangelical. These people are not saved. I don't care what label you put on them. Okay? So-called evangelicals. Getting together with, with Catholics, getting together with Mormons, getting together with, with unbelieving Jews, getting together with Muslims, getting together with Hindus. I mean, do you, do you see the things that they built over in the Middle East where all the world religions are coming together? Friend, that's what's going on right now. It's happening in front of our face. Now, watch this. Let's go to 2 Timothy. And this is what's the start of it right here. 
Now, Hebrews 1 tells us when Jesus came as a man, we are in the last days. So this is now a reference to uh, when Jesus came up to the time right before the tribulation, the one we just read in 2 Thessalonians. But know this. So God wrote this so that you and I would know this has happened. That in the last days, what is the last days? It's defined for us in the book. God, who at sundry times and in various ways done what? Spoke to the people, to the fathers, through the prophets, right? And in these last days has spoken to us through his son. So are we in the last days? Of course we are. Are we in the last seven years? No, we're not in the day of the Lord. The last days is not the same as the day of the Lord. Okay, what's going to happen in the times leading up to the day of the Lord? Perilous times. Listen, please. Perilous times will come. Will come. But only if Christians, true believers, don't pray. Is that in the book? No. Perilous times will come, but only if you don't fast, only if you don't witness, only if you don't read the book. That is not there. It is going to come. And I don't care how much you pray. Why? Because it's written. And you can't change it with prayer. God would have to violate his own word. If this doesn't happen, then everything that follows after that cannot happen. And you can toss the whole book because none of it's true anymore. You can't pray this away, friend. All you can do is do exactly what the Bible told us to do. What's that? You have a ministry. What is that? Go out and preach the gospel. Go tell people about the gospel. God never told us to pray that this, the rest of the prophecies that's in his book ain't going to come true. To pray against the perilous times, that's useless. Why? Because God won't do it. Save your breath. That's the kind of prayer that God can not answer. It's not that he don't want to answer that prayer. God cannot answer that kind of prayer. Why? Because he's already said to you and to me that I want you to know about this. Why, God? Because it's going to happen. He gives you now an example of what that end time, the close time to the, to the tribulation, what it's going to look like. Here it is right in front of us. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, naughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. What does that look like? That look like religion. That look like people boasting about going to church and doing all those things. But they deny what? The power of God. Can I ask you a question? What is the power of God? Please give me what the power of God is based on the scriptures. Don't, I don't want your definition of it. What you think the power of God is, is immaterial. What does the book say the power of God is? Let me help you. Again, folks, go to the book. The book answers itself. You don't have to guess at this stuff. It answers it for you. Here it is. Romans 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of what? The gospel. And that gospel is of Jesus Christ. For it. What is it? It is the gospel. What about the gospel, Lord? It is the power of God. So let me ask you again. 
when the book of Timothy starts talking about something being the power of God that they deny. What is it that they are denying? They are denying the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power and only power God uses to bring people to Christ. They deny the gospel. So he says from such stuff, such things, turn away. So what do we have? Perilous times. And they're here. They're not coming anymore. They're here. And they're going to get worse and worse and worse. So now let's go to 1 Timothy. Watch this. And right here. Look at this. Watch the wording again. Pay attention to the word. The wording we said, number one, first you read about the day of the Lord. What is that? That's the seven year tribulation. So seven year, seven years of tribulation, also called uh Jacob's trouble. All right. Seven years of tribulation. That's the day of the Lord. Now he's talking about latter days. So is he talking about the day of the Lord? No. The latter days is not the day of the Lord. The last days is not the day of the Lord. Okay. Some will depart from the faith. Now, what does he mean? Does he mean that some will be saved and then turn back and not be saved? No. Remember, let the book explain itself. What did John in 1 John say? What did he say? They went out from us because they were not all of us. If they had been of us, no doubt they would have continued with us. So they went out from us to prove that they never possess true believing faith. They were like Demas who loved this present world. Who was with Paul? He was with Paul for a while, but in the end, he departed because he was of the world. They always go back, friends, always. They give heed to deceiving spirits and listen to this doctrines of demons. So, when you see people who you believe who were once so-called saved and they end up being a Jehovah Witness, were they ever saved? No. They end up going to a Mormon church, were they ever saved? Of course not. Because guess what? If you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Bible says he seals you, he protects you, he keeps you, he guarantees that you won't be deceived by demons. That's impossible. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience, listen, seared. Believers do not have their conscience seared, friends. They have their minds renewed. What a high eye. Listen to some of the things. And it's just a broad category that God puts out there. They forbid to marry. 
False religion does that. The Mormons does it. Or they marry more. The Jehovah Witness believe that. The Catholics believe that. There's some other false religions, so-called Christian religions, that does exactly that. This is a doctrine of demons commanded to sting from certain foods. That's a doctrine of demons. Let nobody tell you you can't eat steak. That's a doctrine of demons, man. Or you can't eat pork because the law, don't you understand what the law says? That we've been free from the law in Romans 7. If you're free from the law, who put you back under it? Somebody who has a doctrine of demons? By those who believe and know the truth. See, if you believe and know the truth, then you won't be having your conscience seared Forbidding to marry and abstain from foods. All of this won't happen to you. See, if you have received the truth with thanksgiving, you see, those who believe and know the truth. Now, it can't happen to them. Why? Because God won't let it. See, so there you go, friends. Now, let's let's continue here. I want to get in a few more scriptures in. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. So let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3 now. We went to chapter 2. And I want to, no, that's not the right one. Uh, it's chapter 4. All right, look at this. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. Listen, folks, if you think he's talking about this living and dead, if you think he's talking about people who are alive today and those who have died in the past, come on. No, the people who are living are those who are born again. What did God give them? In you, second uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, he made alive. I am come to give them life. Then the others are dead, how? In trespasses and sins. So he's not talking about anything physical here. He's talking about being born again from above where God gives you life. Or being dead in your trespasses and sins. Everybody face judgment, even believers. At his appearing and his kingdom, preaching the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? Why do that? For the time will come when they, who's they? Who's they? The people you're preaching the gospel to not believers. You don't preach the gospel to believers. You preach doctrine to believers. Once they're a believer, they believe the gospel already. You don't just keep preaching them gospel, gospel, gospel. What are you preaching? You preaching the doctrines of the faith. For the time will come when unbelievers, the day here is unbelievers, will not endure sound doctrine. You see that? They won't endure that. Why not? But according to their own desires, you see, believers don't have any desires. Your desires are now given to you. Why do I say that? Because Paul says to the Galatians, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. So did Paul have desires? Nope. 
but Christ in me. And the life that I now live, how do I live it? According to my own desires? Of course not. I live it by the faith of the Son of God. So the believers were bought with a price. You are not your own. Therefore, do what? Do your own thing? No, glorify God. That's not a believer. They're following their own bodies because they have itching ears. Believers don't have itching ears. Believers have ears that hear. They will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn. See that right there? Who turns? Believers don't turn their ears away from what? The truth. A true believer is a lover of truth. They will never turn their ears from the truth. They will never seek something that's not sound doctrine. When they hear it, they will run and turn to fables. They won't believe what? The truth. They won't believe the scriptures. They would turn to people who are doing fake miracles. They would go and seek out these fake healers. They would go and get these, these, these charlatans, these wolves, who's fleecing the flock of God, telling them, if you send me a seed offering of $1,000, God will pay all your bills. How about using that thousand dollars that you're going to send that idiot and pay your own bills? God already gave you the money. Why in the world are you going to turn around and give it to him or her? Now, let's go. We got a couple of more, and we're going to wrap this up. We're going to go to Second Peter. And we're going to look at chapter 3. All right. And we know this is him talking about stirring up your mind and people talking about the last days. They're going to be, and this is, this is really where I want to get to right here. Uh, we should be following the holy prophets and the commandments of the apostles of our Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, what's going to take place first, Peter, that scoffers. If you want to know the definition of a scoffer, where do you have to go? Where do you have to go? It's in the book. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. If you want to know the definition of a scoffer according to the scriptures. God don't leave this kind of stuff unexplained, friends. You just have to read the whole book to remember where you find it. They will come, look, in the last days. They will not come in the day of the Lord. It's too late. The man of sin is already there. They're going to be walking. Look at this, the same stuff. They're walking after their own lust. We just read the same thing. So what kind of people have their own things? Unbelievers. You see, when you start putting the word of God together and start tying it together, you can clearly see what an unbeliever looks like. And seeing where is the promise of his coming? Why are they saying that? Because they don't believe the truth. If you find a person even a so-called preacher saying that Jesus is not coming back in the flesh, do you know he's a false teacher? Run away as fast as you can and don't go back. For since the fathers fell asleep, talking about the people uh, that came before us, all things continue as they were from the beginning. No, that's not true because he then explains about the flood 
and how God changed the world after Adam's sin, how he changed it again after Noah to the current world that we in. By the way, folks, since you know, according to the scriptures, we're on the third iteration of the earth. And there's going to be a fourth when Jesus comes back. He's going to change it again. Okay. The world, you see this right here? The world that then existed, what happened to it? So for those of you who say, Kevin, you have lost it when you said that we're on the third era. I didn't say that. God did. He says, you should know that for this, they willfully forget. You should know that by the word of God. Who said that? The word of God said the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in water. I explained that before. By which the world that then existed. But that means it don't exist today. What happened to it? God said it perished. How did it perish? He flooded it with water. He flooded it with water. So do we live in the same world that was back then? Of course you don't. God just told you that it perished. Why do you think Noah was having so many, so much problems with the grapes that he raised? It wasn't the same kind of salt. It was a different world. Noah and his children saw both worlds. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, are preserved by the same word. You see, it's going to be changed when when Christ comes back. You don't believe me? Go read the book of Isaiah. Go read chapter 2. Go read chapter 11. I think it's in three or four other chapters in Isaiah. And uh, Ezekiel talks about it. See, so go read the prophets. Micah talks about it. Uh, Job talks about it. There's a lot of prophets that talk about the new world that's coming. All right. Now, one final scripture on this, and we're going to call it a day. Look at Jude. And look what he says here. This is what's happening, folks. And I mean, it's tough. It's, 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 it's really tough for people to take. But look, it's, it's true. So here it is again, the things that's happening today. These are grumblers, complainers, walking. Look at this, folks. <laughs> so isn't the Bible extremely consistent? This is the third person who wrote a book in the New Testament that tells us the same thing. They are walking. This is living their lifestyle. How they're doing according to their own lust. There it is again. So who are these people? Are they believers? No. They are unbelievers. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people. Why do they do that? To gain advantage. They want your money. They want your attention. They want the applause of the crowd. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of the Lord. Isn't that the same thing that Peter said to us? What about it? How they told you that would be what? Mockers. You know what that's the definition of a mocker song? Come on. You know. Where? Same place where the scoffers are found. Proverbs 1. In the last time, see, who will walk according to their own ungodly lust. Same people, folks. These are sensual persons. They are immoral, sexual, even in their minds. They cause the visions. What about these kind of people who have their own lust, their own ungodliness, having not the Spirit of God. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 said, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not one of God's children. Doesn't say anything about going to church. Doesn't say anything about reading the Bible. 
doesn't say anything about praying. It says, if you don't have the spirit, you are not one of God's children. So don't tell me about people in their church attendance. Don't tell me about people doing what I'm doing. Don't tell me about none of that stuff. That is not the mark of a believer in the eyes of a holy God. Every believer have the spirit of God living inside of them. Everyone. They love the truth. They obey the truth. They are thankful and they glorify God. If that's not you, friend, all I can tell you is you're not going to heaven. You're walking after your own lust, your own ungodliness, seeking your own way, doing your own thing. Then the scriptures tell me, I don't need to know you. The scriptures say, you don't have the spirit and you're not going to heaven. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Ask him to save you. And he said he would. And those that believe, he called them. Dealing. Okay, friend. So I want to share that with you tonight. And we'll be back, you know, later this week, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and we'll, we'll get back to our study. You guys have a wonderful night.